booktube it's missy um today is a new day booktube a is over i have become addicted to vlogging for some reason i don't like editing videos every single day because that's exhausting but uh telling you guys about what i'm doing for some reason is enjoyable <laughs> i don't know um i've been watching the youtube uh, booktube a wrap-ups for the last hour. I'm currently watching Lala and that is a silly face that I stopped at but her video was amazing. I love when um, people put their husbands in videos because husbands are always like really shy and they don't want to be involved but sometimes they really like it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah so today I think to wrap up booktube a and to do my actual wrap up for all the books that I've read. I am going to vlog my day as a um, as an end to a wonderful readathon. I had so much fun. Um, so I'm gonna finish watching some more uh, booktube booktubeathon videos and then we're heading out to do some book shopping because once you read all these books, you want more books, right? So I'll take you along with me on my book excursion. And um, we'll see what I get. That'll be really fun. And of course, we'll have a wrap-up at the very end. So it'll be like a vlog, book haul, and shopping, plus a booktubeathon wrap-up. Say hello. Say hello. Hello, 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 hello. All right, we are at the uh, post office, and we're gonna check the um, the PO box to see if I have any presents in there. Um, we did go to UPS, but that was boring, so I didn't vlog that part. So let's take a journey into the post office. Yeah, maybe we're out. Wah, wah, empty. empty, nothing. Tra -la -la. Okay. It was empty, as you could see. Uh, so we're heading to the library bookstore to see if we can find any um, treasures there. And then we're heading to Book Off. We are at the library. I don't know if we're allowed to film in the library bookstore. And plus it's super tiny and there's just an old lady in there who usually is super nice. But I don't want to make her angry. So I'm going to be recording everything uh, very quietly probably not going to talk about the books. I'm just going to show the books off, okay? <laughs> and then, of course, show my loot when I'm done. Well, I am. I am. I'm just going to look for more. You're going to look for more? I'm going to look for more. Are you dragging new books? Are you looking for yeah, more? Okay. Shh, boys. You guys need to be very quiet. Shh. We just got out of the library bookstore. I published. I published. What the hell am I talking about? I found. Jonathan Livingston Siegel by Richard Bach. This is one of my favorite um, classics. And this is kind of like a philosophical, transcendental, spiritual book about a seagull who dies and goes to like a heaven and then comes back to teach other seagulls how to uh, <laughs> better themselves. Um, I own this book. But this is a really pretty, like, larger edition. Like, mine is a um, mass market paperback size. So this was a wonderful surprise. And um, it is in perfect condition, and I kind of wanted to give it to one of you guys. This was a dollar, and so if you are interested in Jonathan Livingston Siegel, look out for a soon-to-be trade away. All right, Keanu got a book. Tell them. Curious George. Curious George. Uh, and the Puppies by Margaret and H. A. Rays. He bought it H. for a quarter. A. H. A. Rays. You bought it for a quarter? Yes. Yeah. Twenty-five. Twenty-five cents. Okay, grab it. 
Okay, the next dollar book I purchased was Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkin Harkness. This is the second book in a Discovery of Witches trilogy. I own the first one. I found it for a dollar. Now I have the second one for a dollar. Super exciting. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get to this series, but I really do want to read them. And so yay to that. Next, I bought Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I've already read this, never owned the book. I was debating whether I even wanted to own it because I, I really hate this story. Like, I love it and I hate it at the same time. But for a dollar, I bought it. Now I own all of her novels. And lastly, I found this uh, book, The Girl in the Spider's Web by David Legerkrant. Leger this is the continuation of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Steg Larson. I own all three books, so I might as well buy the fourth in his continuation uh, series. And it's in perfect condition as well. It's got deckled edges, and again, it was a dollar. So, I spent a total of $4.25 on this trip. I'm super excited. And that's it. Let's head to Book Off. Driving down the 50, da -na -na -na. we are almost there. I have to get to Junction 163, in four miles, so I'm good. At Edward Cinema is the best. They have really good seats, and they have IMAX theater. All right, we are on the 163. We are looking for Balboa Avenue, because that's where we have to turn in order to get to Bukov. Alright, there's Balboa Avenue. Let's get over because it's in a half a mile. Okay, so we're gonna have to walk like a super <laughs> far away from the bookstore because every single spot is crowded and full and the spots are super tiny here and I drive a um, small SUV so ugh! so annoyed that I have to walk so far. But let's go! Hello again. I am back. It's been a few hours since we got back from our book hunting excursion. And so now I am ready to film my booktube-a-thon wrap-up. Now I ha did filmed this hours ago and uh, when I went to go edit it I realized I absolutely hated the footage and so I am redoing it. I just I tend to talk really fast when I'm excited and then I miss information that I wanted to say and I can't just throw it into the video with words. So I decided I would just refilm the whole stinking thing. Um, okay, so with the booktube a it was from the 18th to the 24th. It's It was seven days long. It was hosted by Errol Bissett. She's the one who created it. There were Twitter, spin, Twitter sprints, which I did not participate in any of them. There were video challenges, which I participated in almost all of them. There were Instagram challenges, which I participated in a few of them. And of course, I did a daily vlog every single day to let you guys know where I was at in the booktube -a I will leave all of the links to all of the videos that I made down below along with, you know, my regular information. I have all of my social media down below if you wanted to check out those Instagram pictures, but I'll leave little pictures here in the video as well. The first challenge was to read a book with yellow on the cover. I read Cardboard by Doug Tenopel. I gave this book five stars. I absolutely loved it. Here is the review for that book. On day one of the booktube a I read Cardboard. I don't know if I fully went through it, but it's basically about a man who is down on his luck. His wife has uh, passed away, and he is in between jobs, and his son's birthday is today. 
And so he wants to buy his son a present, but they don't have any money in order to do so. And he sees an old man on the side of the road with some kind of like cheap toy stand. And he goes up and he talks to the man. He's like asking, you know, how much something is or whatever. And he goes, oh, I don't have that much money. And the guy goes, is your son a good boy? And the father's like, of course. And he goes, you know what? I'll, I'll let you on a secret. I have this box and I'll sell it to you for 78 cents. And that just so happens to be exactly the amount of change in the man's pocket. So he buys the box, not knowing what kind of box it is, and takes it home and he decides to create a boxer out of this box for his son and the boxer comes to life. So it's kind of like, not really, but a kind of like Pinocchio where, you know, the boxer becomes, you know, a, not a real person, but you know, an animated object and the boy falls in love with his little box friend and lots of craziness happens after that. There is a horrible neighbor named Marcus, kind of like the kid on Toy Story, Sid, who's like really demonic and like breaks his toys. Um, Marcus is just like that where he's really creepy and all he wants to do is make monsters and he kind of steals a little bit of Cam's um, magical cardboard and creates monsters himself and the monsters you know take over and lots of dangerous things happen after that as you can see here Marcus is freaking out because his monsters are not able to be um, controlled anymore and does Marcus and Cam become friends at the end? I don't know. You're going to have to read to find out. But I really, really enjoyed it. The illustrations are beautiful. I loved it. I love the heartwarming message that it, you know, brought about friendship and love and, um, you know, between a father and a son and not worrying whether you have money or not because money doesn't bring happiness. Um, you know, it's all about your friends and family and those around you that care about you and you know uh, just being grateful for what you are given. I just really 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 like this and this is by Doug Tanopel. Um, I also have two other graphic novels by him that I will be reading during the Booktubeathon and so I'm just really excited to find a new graphic author, graphic novel author that I enjoyed because my son also liked this graphic novel and so I want to be able to share those more of them of this author with my son. Words. As you can see it was pre-recorded because the books were due um, last Thursday at the library. The second challenge was to read a book only at nighttime. I read Crimson by Laura Foster. I only got to read half of the book because I was busy editing and uploading a lot of these videos before bed, which took a little bit of my reading time away, but I'm still enjoying this book and I can't wait to finish it, hopefully this week. The third challenge was to read a book that you discovered on booktube and that is Picnic at Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay. I saw this on Brittany's channel at Under the Radar Books. Um, it sounded very interesting and so I picked it up from the library. It's about a, it's not a boarding school but it's a, it's a school for girls and it's called Appleyard College and they decide to go on a field trip to Hanging Rock, which is like a volcanic, like, um, like rocks and kind of like a mountain, but not. <laughs> it's just like a structure of rocks. And there are monoliths and crevices and all of these things. And it's underneath uh, Mount Macedon. I think that's how you say it. Anyways, this takes place in Australia in the 1900s. It's Valentine's Day the whole class goes to Hanging Rock for a picnic. And when they arrive, um, three of the girls, or actually it's four girls, four girls decide to go exploring 
and only one of them return and she doesn't remember what happened and then when they you know try to gather all of the kids together they realize one of the teachers is missing as well it's very mysterious very strange um, they don't know what's going on the police get involved and they still can't find anybody a week later one of the girls is found alive she's unconscious and she doesn't remember anything that happened. The teacher and the other two girls are never recovered. Not only is it a strange mystery, but it kind of has like a paranormal aspect to it where it's almost like a Bermuda Triangle kind of thing where these volcanic rocks have some kind of like sinister um, energy and the bodies are never found from the girls. Nobody can find out what happened to them. All of the memories are missing from when they're in the volcanic rocks, like in the area. Um, watches stop once they reach that um, that point near um, <clears throat> the uh, the peaks, and so it's very mysterious and strange. And then the third like little aspect of the book is the fact that everything is connected kind of like a um, like a butterfly effect so the girls start the ball rolling and then everything trickles down and um, the story continues when you get to the end of the story uh, it it's it's kind of like I don't know it's it's I don't want to say I was unfulfilled because it there's still the mystery aspect they still don't know what happens. There's not that closure that you're going to want at the end of this book. And so it makes me want to read it again to see if I missed anything. It was so good. So if you are interested in reading a historical fiction set in Australia, and it's a huge mystery, and it's got like you know, paranormal aspects to it, I would definitely pick this one up. I gave this book four stars. All right, the next challenge was to read a book by your favorite author. Now, I picked up uh, Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. Stephen King is one of my favorite authors, um, but it was just too big and chunky for this readathon, and I only read I only read 18 pages from this book. Uh, it was the very last book I would pick up every single night. It wasn't a uh, it just wasn't a priority to me because I knew I, I would need more time to read it. And so I just wanted to use the Booktubeathon as an excuse to continue to pick it up every single day, even if it was just a few pages a day. So I am enjoying this and I can't wait to finish it. The next challenge was to read a book that is older than you. And I chose Alice in Wonderland for that by Lois Carroll. This was... Um, published in 18 was it 1865 eight haha it was 1865 this is my very first time reading this book and I know it's so shocking because it's one of my favorite classics even though I never read it and that's because I grew up my favorite Disney movie was Alice in Wonderland and so I've always loved the story and I was very excited to read and finish this book and realize that it's actually it's pretty similar to the Disney um, movie there is aspects of the movie that are a little different um, there is Tweedledee and Tweedledum in the movie and there is no Tweedledee and Tweedledum in the books so I don't know if that is something that happens at a different time because this is the first adventure this is the first time Alice has been to Wonderland and if you look up um, Alice in Wonderland's adventures. There are many more. And so she must meet Tweedledee and Tweedledum at another time. Um, so that wasn't in the first part of the book. And so I was like, where's Tweedledee and Tweedledum? But all of the other stuff was there, like the um, the dodo bird when they're running around to dry off. And um, there were no flowers. She didn't talk to the flowers in the book. So that must be a different a different adventure as well and uh, but there was also there was the uh, the the hair when she goes to the white rabbit's house and she gets really big that was part of the book which I really liked and the croquet with um, the queen and the trial was at 
um, was in the book as well. So if you've seen the Disney version, it's very close to the book. There are extras that are in the movie, um, which just makes me even more excited to read more of the adventures of Alice in Wonderland. I do have the entire um, leather bound edition from Barnes and Noble that I think has all of the collections of Alice in Wonderland in it. And then I also have another um, puffin edition that is for Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, which I'd like to pick up next month. I'm just so excited for this, uh, to continue on with this story. By the way, I gave this uh, five stars, obviously. All right, the next challenge was to read and then watch the movie adaptation of a book. And so I read The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. Um, reading this book, it's it's very mysterious. It's um, It's got a gothic, creepy, eerie feel to it. It's written in that kind of way. It's set in... Um, the 1900s as well or a little bit earlier maybe in the late 1800s um, it's in London and uh, the main protagonist is a male and he is a lawyer and he goes to this house to collect papers um, for the law firm so it could close out the account because the woman has died and the house is actually haunted and so it's very slow paced and very eerie um, I did watch the movie and I know that a lot of people get angry when um, book book readers tend to uh, compare the book to the movie because cinema is completely different than reading a book. You have to have more thrills in a movie or you'll lose the audience's interest. And so when you have a book, you can make it as long and as slow as you want. But with a movie, there has to be action or, or scare um, tactics or what have you in order for you to stay involved in the movie. So they were very different in feel. If you understand what I'm saying. I will be doing a separate video so I can talk about um, the movie and the book separately because um, I, I really want to talk about that and I didn't like the movie as much as the book. I gave this book 4.5 stars. Like I said, I absolutely loved it. And the very last challenge was to read seven books. Now before um, I decided to read a whole bunch of graphic novels. I chose the dumbest idea ever as my seventh book and I did end up finishing it and I gave this book four stars and here is the review for that one. On day two I read The Dumbest Idea Ever by Jimmy Gownley. Now this man is famous for a uh, middle grade series called Amelia Rules and basically in this graphic novel it's a memoir of his childhood living in Pennsylvania I think or is it Vermont I can't remember but it's a small mining town that he lives in and um, at the beginning of the book he's in middle school and he gets straight A's and everybody thinks he's a nerd and that's what he's known for being like really really good in school and then he gets into high school and he's just not very good at school anymore it's too hard or he's just not interested anymore and he finds that he really likes comics and he likes drawing comics and so he starts drawing them and um, he kind of becomes a slight celebrity in his hometown which causes him to get a big head and then he's being like ostracized, is that how you say the word? Um, at the school because now everyone's like kind of resenting him for being Mr. Popular. But basically his best friend Tony said, hey, you know what, the, uh, the graphic or the comic book that you wrote was great and all, but you know, I think people would enjoy reading about us, like our lives and things that, you know, we got into when we were growing up. And so that's basically what he did. He took that idea and ran with it and created a graphic novel of his childhood up through his um, high school years how he became a, an artist, a comic book artist, 
and all that jazz. It was super cute. I did enjoy it. The only thing that I didn't like, and I think I gave this book 4.5 stars, I don't know why he broke up with his girlfriend. It was just like, oh, I love you, and then the next page it was, and then we broke up. So it didn't make any sense. Like, there was no fight scene, and so I felt kind of, like, sad because I thought they were a cute couple. Um, but, yeah, that's it on this book. Really enjoyed it. I would definitely pick it up if you like, you know, nonfiction memoir kinds of graphic novels. And like I said, the illustrations are amazing. Thank goodness for graphic novels, or I would have only had three books read this week. Um, for the other graphic novels that I read, I read Displacement by Lucy Neasley, and if I really wanted to, I could have counted this towards the um, book with my favorite author because she's one of my favorite graphic novel authors. Um, Displacement, I gave five stars, and here is the review for that one. Displacement, a travelogue by Lucy Neasley. This is one of my favorite graphic novel um, authors. She only does memoirs, and most of the time it's <laughs> it's got food in it. This time there wasn't very much food, but one of the cute things, and I, you know what, if you've never seen her illustrations, I mean, you really should. It's kind of like stickers. Like you go and you get, um, I don't know, like you can go and scrapbook with all these pictures. Where's the pictures? There we go. It's just so cute. But okay, so here's day one of her trip. And you see how the water is really small. And then let me show you day six, the water's up higher. And then we have day 10, the water fills the entire page. I love her transition pages. Um, all of her novels have some kind of transition page, and I just absolutely love her ideas. She's so creative. But basically, this is a story about her taking her elderly grandparents on a Caribbean, Caribbean cruise, and her grandparents are in their early 90s, and it was very difficult for her. She's never taken care of them before. Her um, Both her grandparents have dementia. They're slowly losing their memory, and Alzheimer's are kicking in. Her grandpa has... Um, like bladder issues and he keeps wetting himself and he's like not interested in changing his pants and so she's not only embarrassed but she's like worried that he's going to be uncomfortable. Grandma keeps walking away because she's like you know forgetting things and she doesn't know why she's sitting there anymore and so Lucy kind of is like panicked the whole time she's on this uh, cruise because she's got her grandparents for a week. She's never taken care of them before and she's like out of her element like she's not understanding how to um, deal with them. But in the end, it's a wonderful trip, very bumpy as in, you know, emotionally she was stressed out the whole time, but it was a great experience for her and she enjoyed the fact that she got to spend a little bit of time with her grandparents before they passed away. And her grandpa is still kind of there, so he was telling her how he really did enjoy the fact that she went with them, even though grandma won't remember I will and it was just really really cute um, of course I got teary-eyed at the end because all of Lucy's graphic novels does that to me because it's all about family and my grandparents are getting on in age my grandpa right now is in his 80s and he has dementia and so you know just watching him slowly slip away and not know what's going on is really disheartening um, so yeah it, it like I could relate and it made me sad and the fact that you know our mortality everybody dies and so you know it touches on that fact like you know it's not something that you can control so enjoy your loved ones now because you never know when they're gonna go hmm anywho I really enjoyed that one all right and then the other um graphic novels that I read was Ghostopolis by Doug Tenapple. This is the second book that I've read by him, the first one being Cardboard. This one I gave five stars to. It's about a boy who ends up being in the afterlife and having to find his way home and everything that he has to do in order to get home. It was really good. It reminded me of Wizard of Oz. Like I said, five stars. I really, really like Doug Tenapple's writing and his illustrations. They are just beautiful. This was not a very good page to choose. Let's find another one. <laughs> Look at that kid. He's so funny. Um, yeah, I just loved his illustrations. And because I liked him so much, I did pick up the second uh, graphic novel 
or actually it's the third for the Booktubeathon. And this one is Bad Island, and this is about a family who goes on a boat trip, and their boat is capsized and washed ashore on this mysterious island. And at the beginning, they think that it's deserted, but then they find out that there are some very strange plants and creatures on this island, and they go to explore what else is there and come to find out it's like a alien island. And so this reminded me of Finding Nemo. It was really good. I gave it three stars. Not not as good as the other ones that I read, but I did enjoy it nonetheless. All right. And then I read I read a uh, zebra fish by Peter H. Reynolds and Fable Vision. And this is a coming of age story uh, mixed in with some other things. So the girl with the purple hair, her name is Vita, and it's her first year of high school. She lives with her brother, Pablo, I think his name is. He's a doctor, a research doctor, and um, I don't know where her parents are, but she lives with her brother. And um, he's researching zebrafish, as the title says, um, to help like figure out a cure for leukemia. So Vita's going to school, yada yada. She decides to create a band. She meets all these kids here. They join her band. This girl here ends up having leukemia. And so um, Vita decides to um, put this band, like to have a show at school and charge money to, you know, see her play. And all the proceeds would go towards buying a PCR machine for the hospital in order for her brother to get more research on the zebrafish so that way she can help her friend who has leukemia. So it's like a circle and it's got a good message and um, the kids are really sweet to each other and I really liked it. And the, uh, the illustrations are cute. I liked it. I gave this book four stars. The next thing I read was three pages and it's like a novella or a no a teeny novella. Um, it is called The Meeting and it's actually Dmitry Belikov's um, POV on his first site, like his first meeting with Rose Hathaway in, um, in Portland, Oregon when he goes to fetch them to take them back to the academy. Uh, it was so good. I always like reading the male's perspective on, you know, what they thought about meeting the girl, um, the main character of the books. And this was so cute. I will leave the link down below to the actual um, website that I found the story at. And like I said, it's very, very short. It's It'll probably take you like five minutes to read, maybe less. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And it's the only novella I think think the Vampire Academy has. And the last book I want to talk about is Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. This was not on my Booktubeathon TBR. I was trying to finish this book. This was a buddy read with Will from the Bookish Empire. And I was trying to finish this book before the Booktube, the Booktube, before the Booktubeathon started. But I ended up reading almost 195 pages um, during the early morning of the book tubeathon and so I'm counting it so this is the point five that I was talking about so I did read nine and a half books um I had a lot of fun during this book tubeathon so those were all of my reviews for the um the reading challenges for the video challenges the first day was to do a book domino I don't like making a mess and my house is just a disaster so I didn't want to film behind a pile of books going around my dirty house. Um, the next video challenge was to do a location recreation and I did Pennywise the clown from the book It and I did it inside the gutter that he was sitting in when he was talking to Georgie. It's like I don't like 20 seconds long very short but I had fun making it. The third challenge was do was to do the book slip in and that was with um where I did the dialogue between the two girls and they were talking about um a boy cheating on a girl in the woods uh, I 
that was hilarious and I had a lot of fun doing that one as well. The fourth day was to do a book spine poetry which I did and it was very dark and mysterious and I had um, like two voices talking at the same time kind of like an echo. Um, that was really fun. The fifth day was rainbow stacking. Again, I don't like making a big mess, and so I couldn't fathom like pulling books off of my shelf to make these stacks, so I just skipped that one. The next video, day six, was the literary um, road trip, which I did the puppet show and for the Vampire Academy series where Rose went on all of her adventures, and I followed her. And the very last challenge was the book cover um, story challenge where you had to take a book and talk about the plot of the book using only book covers. And I did The Mortal Instruments, uh, the first book in The Mortal Instruments, which is City of Bones. I did the plot for that using the book cover. So I will leave all those links down below so you can see all of those videos. Again, I skipped the dominoes and the stacking because I just didn't want to do that. And then for the Instagram challenges, um, the first one was landscape matches. The story, I did cardboard and I put the book in a box um, surrounded by cardboard because that's what the book was made um, about. The second challenge was a book rainbow, which I used all of my Stephen King books for. The third challenge was a favorite quote from a book. I skipped that one. The fourth one was a book and a snack. I skipped that one too. These ones I meant to do, but you know, I lost track of time and then it was just too late. Um, number five was to take a picture of your favorite classic and I did Alice in Wonderland. I absolutely loved that picture. I like all the pink. There's all this pink going on. Um, the sixth Instagram challenge was to take a picture of a hand-me-down book. I was going to do Jonathan Livingston Siegel by um, Sebastian Bach. That's not his name. Richard Bach. <laughs> Sebastian. I think his name is Richard Bach. Anyways, uh, I was going to do that one, but again, I forgot, and then I ran out of time. And then number seven was to take a book outside, and it's been too hot to go outside, so I skipped that one as well. So the Instagram challenges, I only did three of them, but I had a lot of fun with the three. The most fun I had was during the, um, the video challenges. I'm really happy I got to participate in almost all of them. And so for a grand total... All of the pages that I read during the Booktubeathon, I read 2,218 pages. Go me! I'm so excited and I had so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this extremely long <laughs> uh, video for the Booktubeathon, my wrap up. I hope you guys had a wonderful reading time if you participated in the Booktubeathon. I hope you guys have a wonderful week this week and I will see you tomorrow with another video because I have a lot that's going to be coming up in the next couple days. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.